when we take the history, we need to we need to think about sport mechanics always. Um, and so in diving, what I want to know, I mean, I, I can honestly, at the risk of sounding arrogant, make most diagnoses when I get a phone call from coaches over the phone. Um, because if I ask the right questions, so are they having pain with, when they throw their fronts or their backs? Do they have pain when they're circling? Do they have pain when they're entering the water? How do they say it? And is it worse on backs and gainers or fronts and ankles? And with that amount of information, I can usually tell where's the lesion in the shoulder. I can't tell about the mechanics of how the shoulder blade is moving, but if they're calling me, there's already been a positive MRI and there's a structural failure. Um, and so I want to know where in the diet does it, does it bother me. And there are repetitive impact at high loads during entry. Forces are transmitted up through the wrist, to the elbow, up to the shoulder, through the triceps. So if there's weakness at any point, ultimately a wrist problem or wrist weakness can manifest itself as a as shoulder problem. So the macro trauma that we see in divers, that's the, those are the acute injuries. Dislocation or subluxation of the shoulder, which is a partial, subluxation is a partial uh, dislocation. Uh, bank heart is within the labrum, and I'm, I'm saying this only so you hear the words, because when you go back, you, you may hear these words from physicians that you're dealing with. A bank heart is within the labrum is pulled off, the capsule is the, is the ligaments, and a haggle lesion is when it tears off of the, when the ligaments tear off of the ball, not the socket side. Really uncommon, I've only seen it in one diver, but that diver dislocated at nationals, and they put his shoulder in, and as he was going to x-ray and walking to the truck where they were doing it, his shoulder dropped out, and it just kept on dropping out because it was torn all the way, it was all the way around and, and torn off. Um, but frequently, it's, the athlete has laxity, so there's a normal looseness, because I think that to some extent the athlete chooses the sport, to some extent the sport chooses the athlete. If you don't have a significant amount of laxity in shoulders, you can't be a decent diver. But there's a continuum of laxity where it eventually becomes instability. So there's looseness that gives way, and usually it's with one trauma and the person uh, dislocates. Slap lesion, let tear the labrum on the top, we talked about, and then rotator cuff tears are, are rare. I, I've only actually had to do a, a full-on repair, of a, a full thickness tear of the rotator cuff on, on one person. Um, there are partial tears, and that's very common. The repetitive microtrauma, we see subluxation events where the, the shoulder is coming out partially, usually because there's laxity, and some, there have been probably about four or five divers that have done arthroscopy on where they did not have a middle ligament. We had to make one. Uh, arthroscopically. Um, the partial tears of the rotator cuff are common. Multidirectional laxity or unidirectional laxity, um, which eventually becomes an instability. Um, the slap lesions and scapular dyskinesis, which is abnormal mo movements of the shoulder blade. And then there's all the overuse things. Um, tendonitis, uh, rotator cuff, <coughs> biceps, or impingement, those are the diagnoses I usually hear on divers. If it's a young, healthy athlete and it's an itis, that's, a, that's, not the, that's not the source of the pain. That's, that is the source of the pain, it's not the cause of the pain. Okay, it's the consequence. The problem is if you treat the bicep tendonitis, it'll be back. If you don't treat the cause of the bicep tendonitis, um, it will keep coming back. Usually related to the shoulder blade not moving properly, frequently related to instability or laxity. Um, we've had, I, I only know one diver that, that's had surgery on her cromiofibicular joint and, and I didn't do that. Uh, so Chromiality is a um, uh, growth center in the acromion, which is the bone at the tip of the shoulder, and um, that sometimes doesn't fuse, and there's been one diver that's had that, uh, that fused. Rotator cuff tears, usually partial thickness, of pasta lesion is a fancy name for a tear on the underside that has to be reattached. So here's, here's the uh, arthroscopic view, here's the ball, socket is down here, here's the biceps, and here's the tear in the rotator cuff. Here's another one with a different rotator cuff. Internal impingement is something you read about in pitchers. It also occurs in divers, where the rotator cuff is hitting against the labor and they both tear. Impingement syndrome, pretty common. This actually is, a, uh, is an older diver, a former diver, um, where things just get ratty up on top of the rotator cuff and there's a bone spur sitting under here. It does not happen, we know now it doesn't happen in young people. It's usually related to shoulder blade mechanics um, and usually related to inability to position the shoulder blade properly or the shoulder is unstable. 
Instability, there's a continuum from laxity to instability, capsule laxity, we talked about a little bit, the detachment of the labrum. This is a, here's a normal labrum, and here's a capsule that's somewhat loose. But what we see, these are, these are all pictures from one diagram, one event, dislocated from platform. It was his first shoulder injury. So here he's, he's lying on the side, here's the socket, here's the labrum or bumper that's torn off the front, Here's the continuation of that down here where it's torn off the bottom, and here's the continuation where it's torn off the back. So he was 270 degrees pulled off around his shoulder. That's called a Bancroft lesion. Okay, but with the Bancroft lesion, not uncommon, is something called a hill sachs lesion. When the ball pops out of the socket, you actually fracture the back of the ball, and this was also from the same diagram, because I got him moved within two weeks after the injury. The late one, this is actually uh, a diver, <coughs> Shell's diagrams that uh, this is here's the ball, here's the socket, here's the labrum up at the top, and, what we, and here's the rotator cuff. And this was with the arm in the overhead position. And as soon as I put him in a position that I was torquing his arm as if he was going to hit the water, the labrum actually peeled off. So this is a view that you don't get to see. It, there's no fluid in the joint, and the arm is up overhead, not in the position that we usually work. So this actually led to um, a test that we were doing that actually helps identify tears of the top of the labor. And then we repair that by just cleaning up the area here where it has to be attached and sew it in. And that patient, that, that diver that I showed you uh, that had the stretched out capsule here, what we do, what we do is do a plication stitch or make a cleat to tighten it up. And this was back when we were using an absorbable uh, suture material, so depending on the athlete, what the demands are on the shoulder, sometimes I'll use absorbable, sometimes non-absorbable. There are now suture materials that are, have a combination of the two. So here's where, this is a diver that I did actually, um, she was this year, that the, the labor was torn off. She actually fractured the socket. This was a one-time injury. Um, and that, that got sewn back, putting the bumper back up against the socket. There were other injuries with this shoulder as well. And then here's that, that same rotator cuff tear, where all, all we had to do in this case was not repair it, but just clean it up. It's, it's got a nice blood supply, and that'll, that'll heal very well. And then when I get done with my surgeries, everybody gets examined under anesthesia, because if it's going to fail, I want it to fail when it's in my hands, not when they hit the water. So I've got to make sure, it's very easy to make somebody's shoulder stable, just make it too tight. They have a dive again, but, but their shoulder won't come out. On the other hand, if you leave it too loose, they'll be able to dive when their shoulder will come out. So when my partner, Scott Fisher, joined me over 20 years ago when he was operating on divers with me, it, it, we, we had just a bunch in the late 80s and early 90s, and Scott said, I didn't know how tight to make them. It's the same way my mother, knew how, my mother knew how much salt to add when she made soup. Just, just enough. I'm not too tight, not too loose. Well, the way I know in divers is it doesn't do me any good to put them in a pitching position. <clears throat> put them in a diving position. So when you're done with the surgery, you put them overhead, you load the joint, and see, try and push it out. Because if you tighten the capsule at the bottom too much, then it's like a little springboard, and the diver, when they hit the water, it'll fail. And if you leave it too loose, it'll come out. So it's just a matter of getting a feel for it. And then we will refine the rehab based on the patient's range of motion and stability. So I want to make sure they've got all their range and all their stability. Which gets us to functional rehab. And it, it's functional rehab because our goal is to correct the mechanical flaws that cause the problem. So we want to restore the anatomy. I restore the anatomy. That's what I do in the operating room. I restore structure. I don't do anything to restore function. That's the physiology, kinematics, and that's restoring the sensory motor system. Um, and that's up to the athlete. And that's, that's, I mean, my part's done in an hour. They've got a lot of hours of work to do. And if they don't buy in, they'll do it poorly. Um, if the coach doesn't buy in, they'll do it poorly. Um, so we want to restore the integrity of the entire kinetic chain, meaning what's going on in the legs, the hips, up into the shoulder blade, and then reestablish normal function. So coaches talk about alignment all the time. We're just machines. We're biological machines. We'll function if we're out of alignment. We'll look good. We won't be very efficient. Parts won't last as long, but we'll get there. If you have better alignment, you look better, you're more efficient, your performance is better, and you have more durability. So alignment is part of the whole concept of the kinetic chain. 
So the goal that we have in phases is reestablish the proximal segment control, meaning lower down. Uh, then we work to scout the thoracic area. So what I hear heard from coaches is, when can we move them? Well, I don't want a whole lot of movement with the ball and socket joint if the socket's not going to be in the right position. Get the socket in position, the ball will follow. That won't, be, that won't be a problem. Then we'll get control of the ball and socket, let a human joint, and then we'll do the functional training. It doesn't matter how many reps you do if you're doing them poorly. I mean, think of a diver. If the diver doesn't have the right mechanics, does it matter how many hours they practice? No. They'll just master bad technique. And the way we can see that something's not being done properly is the shoulder fatigues. And the first sign of fatigue is they start to hike the shoulder. And you can see that on the pool deck. I mean, the only reason God gave us shoulders and elbows is so we could put our hands where we want to in space. And if you get to a point that you can't go any farther because it hurts, what do you do? You hike, you hike your shoulder away. It'll get you there. But there's going to be, there are going to be compromises. Uh, let's, not, let's forget that. Um, exercises, there are open chain and closed chain. We talked about that in, when we saw the video of uh, the uh, parts of the diet. Open chain means the terminal link where the hand is free. Much more stressful to the rotator cuff in the capsule. Closed chain exercises, which is which are great for divers. Um, there's less shear force on the capsule or ligaments and on the rotator cuff, and makes the cuff, rotator cuff more efficient by about 23 percent. So, if we look if we look down at the hips, you want to make sure that everything is done with the right alignment. So, a very simple exercise to strengthen the muscles around the hip, the gluteus medius, the hip rotators. What you want to make is, is to have them stand on one leg and just do rotational movements. Really important for her work. Um, but it's important that they do it with the proper alignment because, again, if not, they're mastering bad technique. You want to correct the immobility in the thoracic spine early. Really common in divers. I mean, how about that pull posture? I mean, swimmers are worse than, than we are. But it's all in the thoracic spine. And, and divers lose motion in their thoracic spines and sometimes get shoulder injuries because they don't have enough mobility in the thoracic spine. So this is something we do, and we do this with a lot of athletes, but especially we started doing this with divers uh, in the 80s, having them do step-ups. But we have them just so they, it's basically a neurological rehearsal. Even with their arm in a sling, this is not stressful to the shoulder, but you have somebody working with their hurt leg. So just their brain doesn't forget what, what it's supposed to ask the body to do when it comes time to get them on the board. And there are a lot of different things that can be done. There's a, there's a sequence, I think, later. Yeah, just hang on, hang in there with me. Because then the, the sequence later is to have people doing a hurdle with a weight in, in their hand. So everything that we do, we try to be functional for the specific sport. So our program in diving, for, for post-op on divers, is a lot different, I'm sure, from what's being done around the country. The unfortunate thing for me personally is I don't operate on local divers anymore. So I, I unfortunately have to send them, send them back to wherever they came from. And there's only a handful of therapists that I work with around the country that work with divers that know that. Um, so the, the shoulder program that we look at is working at, working on core, working on lumbar pelvic. I know that uh, John Wingfield from talking to him is doing a whole lot of this. You want to do a standing, you want to do it inverted. I mean, a lot of handstands, so we started working with divers in the handstand position Years ago, if you want to work, have you work with a single leg, both legs, and both, I don't know if you're familiar with Bosu balls and sort of calf sphere that we have people do balancing stuff on, but uh, John was telling me that for his divers, he has them doing it enhancements on the Bosu ball, which is great for core control, great for step or thoracic control. So early on, we have patients in the post-op period, you can do um, what's called lawnmower starts, um, even in a sling, so you, it's really pulling the shoulder blade back and down, and then later on, and then the, extent, the extension of that is to have the person start reaching, and we'll have people do this on one leg, I mean, we, physical therapists and athletic trainers get very inventive when it comes to, to exercise. 